Hey everybody, welcome back to the Nate Stowe Show, episode nine. Here we are, can you believe it, nine episodes in. All right, today we're gonna talk about how strength can help with flexibility. Um, also gonna do something fun where I want to uh, rank the positions of the Saints from like worst to best. Uh, kind of a dead time here in the off season where we're between free agency and before the draft, so not a lot happening, so a good time to start a ranking. Uh, and finally, a spoiler-free movie review for uh, Shazam, which just came out last Friday. Uh, so let's start with how strength can ask, uh, help with flexibility. So there's something cool in the body called reciprocal inhibition. What that means is when one muscle does one thing, the muscle on the other side of the body has to do the opposite. So for instance, if you flex your bicep, your tricep has to get longer. You flex your tricep, your bicep has to get longer. So when we design our strength training programs, what we do is design it to where when we're strengthening certain muscles, the other side of the muscle is automatically stretching, so you're automatically getting better posture, posture, you're automatically getting more flexibility. For instance, when we train the abs a lot, the lower back lengthens, and so the lower back loosens up without doing all these stretches. Uh, when we train our butt muscles, if you ever heard you have tight hip flexors, the hip flexors automatically stretch, they automatically lengthen. And when we target the, between the shoulder blade muscles, when we really get those really strong, the chest, the shoulders, all this automatically lengthens. And what's cool is it's like sticky um, versus stretching and tugging and pulling where it's like, I gotta do this every day. Like once you get everything strong enough, it's pretty sticky. Like, uh, you know, the longer it takes to do, the longer it takes to undo. So uh, anyway, getting stronger when you target the right muscles can actually make you more flexible. I think it's super cool. Probably my favorite principle of like um, exercise science. All right, and as Coach Belichick would say, and moving on. Again, like I said at the top of this show is uh, I wanted to rank the Saints uh, from kind of who I think is the weakest position group to who I think is the best. This is a tough task because we're one BS play for one of the Super Bowl, so they're great everywhere. Uh, but here we go. Position 12 of 12 is safety. I think that's our biggest need. That's our weakest link. Um, you know, all we got right now is, uh, what should we call it, Marcus Williams, we got Von Bell, we got Chris Bonhol, Bonhol, he plays special teams, but I think it's our biggest liability. Every time we're lining up, like, that's who guys are going to target, that's who the, the offense is going to target, they're going to try to take advantage of those, guilt, uh, those guys. Um, Marcus Williams had pro bowl potential his first year, he took a step back. Uh, so perhaps being a third year player, he, you know, he can step forward, become a player, uh, a better player. This won't be as big a weakness in the future. But anyway, um, I would definitely have to say that safety is the uh, weakest position we have on the team, the weakest skill group. Uh, finally, spoiler free review, the movie Shazam, which Shazam is basically big, starring Tom Hanks meets Superman. Um, overall, I'd give it a B minus. Now, a B minus is watchable. I think anything B minus, B, B plus, I'm going to watch it. Uh, but B minus just because, you know, it always comes down to the villain when it comes to these types of movies. And the, the villain was kind of weak. Uh, they spent a little bit of time. They tried to develop him. They tried to copy Marvel a little bit and about making a good villain. But I felt like it was pretty weak. He, did, he shouldn't have been so evil for such a small slight. Uh, really, I think if you watch the trailer, um, it's 90 seconds long. Take that out to about six minutes and you got the best part of the movie. It's all like literally in the trailer. It's where he's learning to get his powers. And it's pretty funny. It's pretty fun. Uh, but the villain's weak. Also, when he turns into Shazam, the adult, like, he doesn't act like the kid. He acts like a kid. He acts like big. Uh, but if you look at, like, the teenager that he is otherwise, like, he's actually kind of adultish. Like, he's he's, a, he's on his own. Like, he's basically raised himself. So he's actually pretty mature. So I feel like there's a disconnect between Shazam and the kid. And I also felt like the villain was underdeveloped. With all that said, like I said, it's a B-. minus. Totally recommend. Go watch it. Anything in the B category, I like B movies. Um, so if you're looking to spend 90 minutes, two hours, um, enjoy your afternoon, like worth watching. Uh, but just realize that, you know, the, uh, the villain's weak and there's a little bit something off there with the acting. Um, but otherwise good special effects. It makes, made me laugh a few times. That's it y'all. I'll be back soon.